Welcome to my WOW Chats, words of wisdom with people that I admire and respect and whose work is in line with making this world a better place. Thanks. Well, was that a compliment to me just then? Yes. Yes, cool. Because you're, you're my you. wowzer. I'm your wowzer. Yeah. That was a term you came up with. If you Actually, no, I didn't come up with that term, but a wowzer in where I live is someone who doesn't drink or smoke or dance or something like that. Oh, so you, are you so a wowzer? I'm not really a wowzer, okay. no. I don't smoke. But I you... don't dance very well. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, this is Professor Lorimer Mosley. Thank you. Thank G'day. you so much. Like He's busy. <laughs> he's highly sought after. We're at the World Congress on Abdominal and Pelvic Pain. And I mean, you... Oh, you're just you're so well respected in academia in our in the clinical world yeah, researcher he's one of the if you don't know some of you watching may not know who he is um, you're really one of the world leading pain researchers that's very generous well you are though Thank right you. I mean you have almost 300 papers I've read them all Excellent. from start to finish <laughs> it's probably more than I <laughs> no I <laughs> know and you have several books and you your specialty is explaining pain. I mean, you wrote the book. With you Dave, wrote the book with, with Dave, Dave Butler, Butler. explain yeah. pain, and He's, now he is truly the king. The king. Yeah. yeah. And so that means you're prince, perhaps. Of sorts, yes. But then that means I'm his offspring. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, that's all okay, I'm okay. talking about. <laughs> and um, so I have a question uh, along the lines of explaining pain. How important, or essential would you say um, pain science education is for the clinician and for the person living with persistent pain and is it a continuum like would you say it's essential moderate depends and and I really want your perspective on for both the clinicians for them to understand it and be able yeah. to explain and then also for the like I said the person living in pain is it really that or is it important? If so, how important? Yeah, cool. Um, I think that if I if I could change the question slightly, it becomes a lot easier for me to answer. Yeah, okay. If the question was how important is, and you use the phrase, I think, how important is it to understand and to be able to explain the, the biology of your pain for a person in pain? I think it's really important. Uh, whether it's essential, I, I'm not a 10 guy, right? I, I sort of am always reluctant to conclude absolutely 100% for all cases ever. Um, but I, I would argue that it's it's important for someone who, who has persistent pain. Uh, it will be beneficial for them to understand some of what we now know about why they have persistent pain. Not to say that we can we know everyone's situation intimately, but we know all the potential, well, we don't know all, we know many potential mechanisms by which people hurt. Uh, and there's level 1A evidence that when people understand that, their situation improves on a range of markers. So obviously I'm biased because of the things you mentioned when you started, uh, but even I think if you ask that question to someone who just read the literature and said, well, this systematic review, this meta-analysis, say that it's good and important to do. The guidelines for practice around the world now say it's good and important to do. So I, I would concur with that. The next half of your question was for the clinician dealing with people in persistent pain. Uh, my view there is that it's critical. It's essential, like that might have been your word, because we are the conduit by which people can understand what's going on for them. And if we don't understand what might be going on, and if we don't have a, a, a theory of how we're working that's based on contemporary science, uh, then we're, we're missing a trick. I think we're failing our, our patients in that way. So I do think it's important. But the subtle, but I think very important shift that I made in the question was shifting your question of pain science education into a state of pain science understanding. And I wanted to go there with that next, so right. speak about that, because a lot of people we talk, we hear, you know, pain science education is this thing, and it's this, um, another modality, and it's something you do, and I am so in line with that. 
um, you know, it's a state, it's a way of living, it's a way of being, and it comes out in your language, it comes out in all different ways, so. Yeah, I think there is, there's definitely evidence that, uh, effect, there's very strong evidence that effectively reconceptualizing the biology of pain with someone or in someone uh, is a good thing to do. I'm, I'm slightly, uh, I'm slightly apprehensive with what seems to be the current situation that explain pain in its various brands has become a standalone thing that you do to someone. Yes. Uh, and like you, I think it's actually an understanding of the human. And I'm, I just love the idea of uh, if, if we come from a place that's defendable scientifically, and we make our decisions and we construct our hypotheses off that, whether that be me in the laboratory doing an experiment mm -hmm. or you treating someone who's in trouble in front of you or us talking to our kids or whatever, mm -hmm. if it's coming out of a place that, that is accurate as far as we know things to be, that will be better than if it's coming out of a place based on models that we know to be wrong now. Okay. So, my apprehension of the idea of explain pain becoming a thing is that we then parcel it over here uh, and one of my slides in my talk yesterday at this conference uh, or the day before whatever it was uh, had that idea of it feels like we're getting sucked into explain pain being another tool to put in our toolbox yep. and the toolbox is sitting on a Rene Descartes structural pathology understanding of pain which is I mean, it's, it's, it's so outdated. Mm -hmm. And what I think we need to do is make the, the, the platform, the foundation on which we think and do as accurate as we, we oh, can. So well said. The, Thanks. Oh, I just, <laughs> I'm so happy that you had time to do this. Like that's how I feel and I, 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 I know that, I knew that. And, and it's just to have you here, especially someone of your caliber. We can say, look, you know, it helps though too to have someone like you that's, you know, a, a leading researcher and really respected to, to say those words. And um, so, yeah, thank you, words of wisdom, that's great. No worries. And I have Thanks another question. Do you have time for one more question? Sure. This one is, I might be a little quicker. Okay. So, um, so yesterday when we were chatting, um, you said something to me that just really um, resonated with me and then it made me reflect even more after and I was hoping you could um, elaborate on it a little bit not just as it applies to me but maybe even words of wisdom to educate everyone else listening and Dusty and Miller who's holding our camera um, <laughs> so you had said so you I made a mention of how I just feel so urgent about a lot of these messages that I have to share and I'm so passionate about messages in my work and and you just you yeah, I don't know if you're just intuitive or maybe it was just my body language and and you said yeah I can tell you're passionate and you said that's that's great and you told me to keep your passion and then you said but be careful that you don't let that cloud the clarity or the reality or something to that and I think I, I understand where you're going with that but do you have, do you want, can you elaborate on that a little bit? <laughs> sure. And then even as it relates to just humans in general or, yeah. or clinicians or researchers, just, yeah, or, cool. or human, humanness. Well, yeah, I think about these things a lot and uh, I think it's also relevant to the way you introduced this today, that you like sitting down with people who you resonate with, who share mm -hmm. your view or your values. And that's really nice, but we need to be careful because if we just hang around with everyone who agrees with us, no. <laughs> then we might all be missing out. I actually think that's happening on a worldwide level at the moment, that the, the strategies of communication, all this social media, et cetera, and, and news dissemination, the algorithm sends you what you want to hear yeah, and what you already think. perpetuating I that. think that's a real, real problem. In science, we have a a range of systems and techniques to minimize the effect of bias so there's threats to validity I love passion I, I feel like I'm quite a passionate person and I sometimes feel the the magnificence of the human to an extent where I I will I will become overwhelmed by that mm -hmm. and I have a physiological response and I have tears in my eyes and I get goosebumps on my hands and I value that side of me and I love it. Like I, I love being in that space. Mm -hmm. 
But what I also know is that that's a rewarding space, then my brain will do what I can to create that space. Mm -hmm. Right, and we're, I think we're predictive machines. We're, we're all, we're not machines, we're predictive. And we're always trying to fill stuff in. And we're only really alerted so that we learn when something doesn't match our prediction. So if we spend our whole time making the prediction so strong that they suck away the diversity, then I think we can lose perspective. Yeah. And, and I think in a clinical reasoning sense, uh, the, the, the magical mystery and, and I, my favourite phrase, the fearful and wonderful complexity of the human, can be so uh, emotive that we might miss something really straightforward that still fits into the model, mm -hmm. but it's simple. Uh, and we might choose not to read a paper that gives us a really, to us, surprising explanation for something. Um, so I just think, I do think we need to be careful and the, and the challenge for the really good clinicians, maybe it's not just clinicians, right? The challenge we all face in life it's people. Yeah, it's is, is to, to integrate our own passion and reward seeking and all those lovely things with respect for uh, diversity and complexity mm -hmm. and difference and someone else might not be in that space. You know, if, if I was maybe Maybe there's another speaker at this conference and you'd spoken like that to them. They might have been offended. I don't know. I'm making that up and I have no one in mind. But we need to somehow, I think, in all of our relationships, therapeutic or otherwise, with data, with friends and family and all that, I think we just need to not, not, not buckle that down, that stuff. Embrace it, live it, be in the moment, but not let it cloud our sensory processing and how reading other people and when the patient does this and we keep going on about how beautiful the system is that's not very healthy mm -hmm. yeah, that would be my response to that. it's quite long-winded wasn't it I love it I'm just I'm just soaking it up just you're you're really smart <laughs> cool and you, you confirm get... my biases and yeah, my great. dopamine is just all over now no, that's great. Yeah, but thank you, Lorimer. I it's mean, I know you're so busy and it's just... Ah, stop um, it. You're probably more busy doing is, all these. That's great. This is great. great. So, words of wisdom, Mar Lorimer Mosley. I hug people. <laughs> you hug her. Mwah. Oh, thank you so much. That's a so pleasure. Much. But hang on. You said you're a hugger and you kiss me. This is a high risk strategy. I did it. I did. No, I did it. Air kiss. I didn't kiss you. I just did the sound. So, oh, you're sensory. This, I, I don't know what's going on kiss. there. You created some story. But you know that's a high risk. If a hugger meets a kisser, it's a high risk of kissing the hugger's ear. What, what, what? This is a well-known fact happening in my family when the beautiful Anna, with whom I share my life, she's a kisser. Okay. My family are huggers. Okay. So, so Anna met my dad, went for the kiss, dad went for the hug, Anna kissed dad's ear. Oh! What a way to start the relationship. Anyway, we that's seem to have worked great. that out. That's, I think that's like, out of everything we just said, that's the words of wisdom. Words of wisdom. I'm going to edit it just for that last part. Cool. So, okay, thank you. See you later. Thanks for watching this WOW chat. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. It was an honor and pleasure to sit down with Lorimer and share some of his words of wisdom with you all. Check out some of my other WOW chats with phenomenal people and interesting topics.